What's going on everybody, Red here. So today we're gonna have episode three of Red Talk and we're gonna be talking about Evo. And if you want to go, totally go, it's totally worth it, but you need to save up your money now. I'm gonna be scrolling through my previous video, which of course you can check out on my YouTube channel. While you're here, give the video a like, subscribe to my channel, it's totally free, help me get the 500 subs. So I've gone to the Evo Championship Series seven or eight times. And it's been an awesome, enjoyable experience every single time. Now, I've gone with one other person, I've gone with, you know, five or six other people. I mean, the last time I went, which was last month, you know, with my brother and a bunch of his friends, I think there was eight or nine of us at one time in, in the same room or in the same building, which is which is great. It was a fun experience. There's a whole lot of reasons to go, whether it's competing, whether it's going for cosplay, whether it's to see new games, particularly fighting games, whether it's just being on the expo show floor. It's a convention that is amazing and a lot of fun and I would highly recommend it. I think the biggest thing though, is you have to plan for it. So I did mine last minute because I wasn't going to go. And my brother kind of convinced me to go. I already had money that I could kind of blow, right? But I had to make sure before I went that I didn't over use my expenses because it is not cheap, depending on where you live. So currently right now, I live on the East Coast. Evo's in Vegas. So, you know, we're gonna be, you know, I, I flew to California to visit some family, did a little bit of driving to Vegas myself. And this is uh, sped up quite a bit as far as like speed, but the experience is wonderful. And of course you're gonna eat, you're gonna eat a ton of food there. So uh, you're gonna get your badge. You're, I would recommend buying, you know, a couple shirts or buying some shirts there that you're gonna wear to signify like, or represent, rep or represent either a game you like to play or a character you like overall. Uh, there's a ton of swag. There's a ton of stuff you're gonna want to buy. You're gonna spend a lot of money uh, if you don't watch your bank account. You're gonna walk away spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And you factor in hotel, it's gonna be easily a few hundred dollars if you're going by yourself or if you're gonna be rooming with other people. So this is the thing, if you're into fighting games or if you want to experience the fighting game community, this right here is gonna be the biggest thing of the entire weekend, especially on day one. You're gonna see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that are just lined up, just exploring, watching games, and just enjoying the show floor. This is just the pool play. This is where a lot of people are just competing or watching others compete. So you can see like this entire area is probably a couple thousand people just littered around these small tables and booths to watch people play and talk to other people they meet, including the background right here, you see my mouse pointer. That's a big screen where they have probably a couple hundred seats in front of that screen, a couple hundred seats in front of this screen over here. And then all the way in this back corner on this right hand side, there's gonna, there's more like independent stations where you can just play or they're having mini side tournaments. And then all the way in this back corner here and behind this black curtain, a ton of other stuff. Like on the opposite side of this black curtain is another big stage, plus all the demos and games that you can play. The arcade is way back here. Like it was a huge building venue uh, at the Las Vegas Convention Center. It was just spectacular how big this venue was compared to other venues. I've been in a venue at Evo that was probably like half this size back in 2011, 2012. They actually had a couple venues where it was broken up into several different like sections. So imagine taking half of this in one area and then the other like 25% is like down the hall in another section. And then the other 25% is in another section after that. Like my first year, uh, they didn't have enough spots for the grand finals area because it was in a place like this. So they had a totally separate room that you could pay for that wasn't the main show floor event, but it was a separate room that where you could watch this stuff on a big screen. So you had to pay separately to not be on the main floor, to be in a separate area and a separate, separate floor. Um, kind of same thing goes here. So you have to not only pay for the event, you have to pay for what days you're gonna go to. And typically it's day one and two. And if I remember correctly, I think they just forced everybody, if not a lot of people to purchase all three days. And if you happen to want to watch the big event, it was first come first serve. So everyone paid the same amount of money. Speaking of money, if you want to go to the event once they actually have it make, um, once they make the purchases accessible, you need to buy your tickets early because tickets will run out quick. And again, there's not enough room for everybody to, to fit in here. Definitely get your stuff early, plan for it. Uh, you know, as you can see here, I was playing some games, I ended up winning, winning a couple pops. Uh, this is where you're gonna spend a lot of your time if you like just looking at art and creativity is gonna be the art section. Of course, you're gonna wanna take pictures with cosplayers and that's a, <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, go back to, yeah, this is what I want. Go back to, back to the art stuff. So tons of stuff that people come and people are, you know, spending their own money, you know, paying to be vendors at these booths. I ended up buying two of these shirts. No, I bought, yeah, I bought two of them on day one and then I ended up buying another six or seven shirts the next day. When you're at this event, 
the games are totally free. Like the whole arcade section was free. The booths were free. Um, if you want to compete, there are different games that you compete in and then there are side tournaments that you have to pay for because that actually contributes to the prize pool. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's $10 per game. Uh, that's you know not a lot in my opinion to help kind of with the winnings and proceedings and also help support the venue itself. So that's not bad at all. I decided to do interviews on a whim the night before. I wasn't gonna do it. Speaking of that, here, here's the coolest thing as I end up talking to a buddy of mine that I ran into that I've known for like well, a decade. So there are so many cool people at the event. People are just chill. Even the competitors, a lot of them, unless they just lose a match, like they'll, they'll say hi to you if you come up to them. Hey, how you doing? Punk, big fan, smug, big fan, Daigo. Hey, do you mind if I take a picture? Most people are extremely cool with just you coming up to them, saying good luck, saying that you're a fan, and they appreciate it just as much as we appreciate them taking the time out of their day. So that's the other fun thing. If you're in the competitive scene or if you just like a particular player or a particular game and you watch tournaments throughout the year, you're gonna see people instantly that you recognize and you're gonna wanna watch them. So it's just a huge community of people that are just happy to be there. <laughs> that's my brother, that was a funny moment. Uh, this is, you know, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is going to be coming out. They had a whole booth uh, dedicated to Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So if you wanted to play the game, you know what I found that was really awesome? Uh, not only did they have this booth set up for just particularly the Marvel vs. Capcom collection, and they were specifically playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2 the entire time. What they did was they had three different controller schemes set up in multiple booths, and a lot of them were at the same booth. You can either play a regular controller, which was set up on the PlayStation 5 D-pad, you could play with an arcade stick, which allowed you in a lot of cases to plug in your own sticks sometimes, but usually they stay away from that because of modded stuff. But there's a couple instances where you can like play like your own controller. So they'll have a controller and then they'll have a lever leverless controller or a hitbox, which is just nothing but buttons. They have all three of those options available to you. So depending on your play style and what controller type you like to use, they made it readily available for everybody, which was phenomenal. And even the, the 2XKO booth did the exact same thing. They actually had three separate lines depending on which controller type you wanted to play so just adding more accessibility and making it worse like like myself i don't play on fight stick like i'm not comfortable with doing that i am better on pad i don't play on stick anymore so i go and wait in a line that plays the pad so i don't have to experience a game with a controller that i'm not uh, privy to which is great all the arcade stuff was fun there's so many side stuff that you can do and having the arcade added to the experience because if you didn't want to watch the tournament or you wanted to break or if you wanted to just play a game that you've never played before if you wanted to play time crisis or play these random <laughs> these random games or if you used to play ddr with your friends in high school you know you just you could just take some time away and just hang out in the arcade and all the games are free you know you just you know be polite take turns let people play and it's it's a great time. There's a bunch of side stuff. So Jam Cross, you know, someone I really enjoy watching. He had a little Jeopardy uh, event with uh, other uh, members of the FGC and commentators and players. So they have a lot of like fun games, and it's just you know stuff that you can you can watch and just enjoy yourself. Evil is just a, a place where fighting games come together for enjoyment, and it's something that I highly recommend people doing. <laughs> Break time, and then I go to compete. So this is the. The, the place where a lot of people enjoy themselves. So even though I'm not the greatest player, I'm not even a great player, I would say, considering in my eyes, I still have fun competing. Even if I lose, if I suck, I know I'm gonna play against a bunch of people that are gonna kick my ass. But to compete, to see if you could just play a random person and if you can win. And if you really want to kind of step your game up, it's a good experience to just be in a place where you can play in a tournament with thousands or hundreds of, hundreds and thousands of other players and you know, see how you do. And it's really exciting to have someone like you've never been in a tournament. Like say you go to EVO for the first time and you want to compete and you never competed and say you win your first game, you're going to be hyped because you're at this big event where thousands of people are playing and competing. And you're like, you know what? I won my first match. Let me see how far I can get. And that's it's kind of what it is. Which reminds me, I need to load my videos of my, my tournament play. I actually did commentary on one. Uh, I, I need to upload that sort of later. Here's my recommendation. Here's my recommendation. If you're gonna go to Evo, whichever Evo you're gonna go to, go with friends, go with family, go go with somebody, go with people. I don't recommend going by yourself. It's so much more fun when you're going with people, especially people you 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 know. Like you can go with strangers, like, oh, it's the friends, 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 friend. You guys hang out, have dinner, enjoy yourself, cool. It's much more enjoyable to go with people that you know and people that you either play games with or compete with because you guys have the same interests, you can share your experiences, you can have the same experience. And that is what breaks away from like other type of events. Like if you go to a carnival by yourself, it's not the same experience if you go with your family or your girlfriend or loved one or if your kids. Like if people have kids go to Evo as well. Actually, I don't think I had it in my video. There was uh, some, there was a kid that was dressed up as, 
who was he dressed up as? I think he was dressed up as Sub-Zero and he saw someone that was cosplaying, a female that was cosplaying Sub-Zero. And it was just kind of a really cool moment where the dad was like, yeah, cool, there's another Sub-Zero there. Yeah, like I said, go with your friends, have a good time. Bring stuff to do in the hotel. Bring your console if you can. If you're flying in, it's a little tough. You're gonna spend money. Where, where are you gonna eat? You're gonna spend all your resources on food. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, in between. I messed up that video edit there. Food. Half your money's gonna go to hotel stay. The other half's gonna, okay. Hotel stay, food, leisure. And that's not including the stuff that you're gonna do outside the event. Like this is in Vegas. Like if you're gonna go party outside, if you're gonna go watch some shows, if you're gonna go walk down the Vegas Strip, grab a couple drinks, like that's all expenses you're gonna do while you're there. Plushies, posters, cool sign stuff. Save your money. This video is dropping in August, 2024. The next Evo event is actually gonna be in Los Angeles, California. Whether it's LA or Vegas or Japan or in the future where they're gonna to go to uh, France or not France, where are they going? They're gonna go somewhere in Europe. They're gonna to go to Singapore. Any event that you go to for Evo, save up some money and plan for it. You don't wanna go there and not be able to spend money when you want to. This is the booth where I said, holy crap, I like all these designs, not all of them, of course, but a lot of them. And I walked away with six of them. Dude hooked me up uh, a little bit, but I got, I bought six shirts and it was like 25 bucks a pop. You're supporting the vendors. That's what you're going to do. Play the games. Enjoy yourself. Have fun. Be goofy. Like be yourself. Like if you're, if you're a jerk, don't be yourself. Don't be a jerk there, but you know, enjoy yourself. Say hi to people, take pictures, have fun. The whole point of going to conventions and events like this is to have fun do things that you normally wouldn't do. Sometimes you have to get out of your comfort zone. If you want to take a picture with someone that's a fan, say, hey, how you doing? Big fan, mind if I get a picture? Like, I didn't I didn't really want to interview all these people that I'm about to do in this video. I've never done any type of interview presentation in my life, like like I did for my, for my channel. But you have to do it at some point in time. So I just said, you know what, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna come up to people. I'm gonna say, hey, how you doing? Doing this little video. Do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? Every single person that I happened to ask said yes. Not a single person said no. Not a single person said, you know, maybe later. Now granted, I didn't ask everybody I wanted to, but every person I did ask was like, yeah, totally cool. I was like, hey, this is what I'm gonna do. You're gonna talk in here. I'm gonna record right here. But what I should have done is have like some type of digital business card ready. It's like, hey, if you wanna watch this video and see yourself, here's my YouTube channel. Sub to my channel. I didn't do that every time. I'm disappointed that I didn't do that. Like, I didn't think these two right here, I didn't think they were actually gonna be cool with it because they're actually in the Mortal Kombat 1 booth. I didn't know if they were there like supporting the booth. I don't know if they were like part of the event or they just came to cosplay, but they both took their time out of their event day to come over and talk to me for a good like six, seven minutes. And that was really cool of them to do. And it was actually a great conversation. This woman right here was all dressed up. They got the white out eye contacts and everything. Like people go all out on some of this cosplay. And you know, you just meet a bunch of dudes, a bunch of girls, do some interviews, say hi, have a good time. This dude comment is like, I didn't know this was a commentator for Schoolgirl because I don't watch Schoolgirls uh, very much. This is first Evo, second Evo, second Evo. I think it was her first Evo. Two out of three of these dudes, first Evo, totally cool dudes. We, we played Typing of the Dead for, I, I had played it from beginning to end because nobody was like on it. And then these guys jumped in with me to beat it. It was like, I was there for 40 minutes. These guys were there for like 20, 25 minutes. We're all playing the same game. Just right in the back of here. That's what he just said. It's wild effing time is what he said. Here's what I will say about Sunday Grand Finals. If A, you have the opportunity to. B, you wake up early enough. C, which probably should be number one priority. If you have a game that you enjoy that is in the Sunday Finals, go to the Finals event. Do it. You are gonna have the greatest time, the greatest time. The downside on the Sunday Vinyls, and it varies from year to year depending on the venue and how many available seats they have and when the game times are. In this case, for this past you know, Evo in Vegas, the, the arena, and it was much smaller than it normally is in the last few years, the arena was booked by game two and a half. So halfway into the second game, which was Guilty Gear, the entire arena was full. They still had three more games to go after that. There was five games, four games. This this was Friday. This wasn't. Oh, I'm sorry. This was Saturday. This, this wasn't Sunday. But it was in the same area. It was Grand Blue. No, there was four. There was four games on Sunday. Midway through the second game, the place was booked. People were standing in line for two to three hours with the hopes of getting in to sit in the background there. And most of them didn't. Most of them had to watch the event from outside in a separate area. So you're going to be sitting there for like two to four hours before the game you want to watch. 
just so you can have seats in the air in the arena. Now, the downside for me is I was by myself. I wish, you know, my brother and some of others were interested in going. They ended up coming later and couldn't get in. Like, like these hype moments are definitely in the top six. They don't do top eight now, they do top six. But you wanna be in the venue when these pop-offs and these hype events happen. Like when people like win their events and they like, it is the greatest feeling and experience that happens in there. Like you're jumping up and down, everyone's hyped. It is just so much fun. And it's heart pumping sometimes when you get these really stellar matches. Look at, these are our people leaving. This was Saturday, day three, I get my food. <laughs> so <laughs> check this out. So the matches started at, I wanna say 10 a.m. was the first game. Look how packed this place is. Like there's seating over here. There's like seats in between. It's not 100% full. These are all the people. This was the very end of Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, which is the probably the least popular game out of the top four games that were there that Sunday. The place is full, full enough. Like you have a good amount of people there. It is wild. And you know, I'm glad I recorded, you know, some of this stuff because you realize like, damn, there's a lot of people that are here up this, this early. Like I ended up walking in halfway into the end of this final set. So, you know, it was already, you know, almost an hour and a half in. I'm on the back end of that 20, uh, 20 minutes. And then <laughs> when, when game trailers drop, ooh, people get hype. People lose their mind. People were excited for Dizzy uh, more than that. Look at all these people down here in the bottom right corner. Like, like half of these people in the front are already on their feet. Like this dude in front of me is on his feet already because that's how tight the match was. And people were raving for Nitro. And he did it. We, I thought he was not going to win. Like he lost. Uh, and then, you know, I had to come back convincingly to win that, which was great. <laughs> and then I went to take a bathroom break. The freaking line was long. Elongated line. I was in that line for 40 minutes. I've never seen a, a men's restroom line that long. Typically the women have a long line because they have all stalls. And I waited another 30 minutes to get food because I was in there from like 10.30 a.m. and the event was over almost by 10 p.m. More trailers and announcements. This, this happened while I'm standing off to the side because I'm like, I'm about, I'm in between using the bathroom and about to get food. And this happened and I didn't want to miss the trailer. So I ended up uh, seeing the Tekken trailer and recording my reaction there. And then Tekken was hype. I mean, look at my face. <laughs> I normally don't have reactions like that. I'm more like kind of subtle and whatnot. Street Fighter, Street Fighter. Great matches, great. Almost every single match was great in Street Fighter. We got to witness the controller fiasco. Uh, <laughs> and that was that was a good like 10 to 15 minute stall. So this is when Punk ended up winning. And if you see in the left-hand corner here, like that's my reaction. I was psyched for him. I'm jumping up and down, which I, again, I don't normally do, but like all of these other people, look at all this. This is the final game. And Street Fighter has the most hype. It's the most final game, but you get to be there and experience it at all. Nothing like it. Nothing like it in this type of like game setting. Of course, there's other games. Like if you're into esports, if you're watching, you know, um, if you're watching Call of Duty or if you're watching Valorant, if you're watching League of Legends or if you're watching like any, any game that you're into that you like would like to watch, like all the events are like this. But Evo in the fighting game scene, it's, you know, better than all the others. Of course, they have other ones like Combo Breaker and, you know, Capcom Cup, you know, which is just Street Fighter. But this is just multiple games across multiple um, platforms and whatnot. So it's great. Great, 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 great. Get to see all these people crying on stage and whatnot. And then and then you leave and then it's over Sunday. Good night. See you next year. See you next. See you next Evo. Get on your plane. Drive away. Make sure you get enough sleep. All right. So I just kind of blabbed on and on and on. This was just more of a recap video slash you know, look at what this experience is like. And if you really want to go, again, I highly recommend it. It's totally worth it. Go with friends, go with family, save your money, save your money, plan the trip. They already know the uh, estimated dates, I think for next year, for the next, you know, two or three events, just do what you can to plan around it. You'll figure it out. If you really want to go, you'll go put in the time off of work, save up a little bit here and there because you're going to end up spending like, how much money did I spend? You know, just, just going there, easily $1,000, you know, between the drive time and of course flying. And cause I did both, I drove and I flew. Hotel, well, I actually didn't end up, my brother ended up taking care of a lot of that stuff, but you know, the amount I would have had to spend would have been upwards of closer to $1,000, including all this stuff that I put in. I mean, just to go to the event last year was almost 300 bucks, just to go, plus another like 20, 30 bucks to compete, plus everything that I spent there. So I'm already, you know, 30% to 1,000 just by wanting to go to the event. It's not getting any cheaper. I don't want to blab on anymore. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, sub to the channel, help me get to 500 subs. If you enjoyed the video and you made it this far, give it a like, check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below, hit that notification bell so you get to know when I'm streaming and playing other games. I'm Eternal Red Gamer. Thank you for listening to my Red Talk. See you on the next one.